Back on May 5th of 2023, it was officially announced that beginning in July of that same year, all newly purchased licenses of SolidWorks would come standard with SolidWorks Cloud Services, and users with older licenses were given the option to upgrade to include them. With just over a year having passed since the debut of SolidWorks Cloud Services, more users than ever have access to cloud-based data management tools, but understandably, a lot of people have no idea who these tools are for or what they're supposed to do. And to be clear, just like SolidWorks itself, not everyone will use cloud services in the same fashion. Some of you may be looking for a nicer way to share designs and get feedback instead of emailing a pack and go back and forth or convincing everyone to install e-drawings. On the other hand, you might be more concerned with your team's revision control practices if you don't already have PDM and that assembly named RevC dash final underscore V2. Yeah, I'm sure that's the right one. But whatever your needs may be, if you're watching this video, it likely means that you're already familiar with SolidWorks and you want to understand more about how these new tools will affect your day-to-day -day work and how you can benefit from them or how you can ignore them. We're diving straight into the ins and outs of cloud services tools now available inside of SolidWorks in this episode of Ask Solid Professor. Here, just no, not like here. Yeah, on. Try turning it off and back on again. Here, try this. No, oh, yeah, there you. we go. That wasn't too bad. I first want to mention that this video is part of a three-part series on cloud services, and this video in particular only examines the tools available from within the SolidWorks interface. While useful, there's a lot more you can do with the included browser-based tools, so be sure to catch the next installment as well, getting started with browser-based cloud services. We're also assuming that an administrator in your organization has already activated cloud services, set up the 3D Experience platform, and designated you as a user. This is extremely important because if you're the very first person to activate cloud services for your company, you will automatically become the administrator and they probably won't pay you any extra for it. If this is all very confusing, we'd recommend checking with a manager or your IT department to verify that everything is set up properly before proceeding just to be safe. If you are planning on becoming the administrator, however, pause this video and go take a look at our short course on getting started with the 3D Experience platform before continuing. Lastly, I just want everyone to be aware that the cloud services I'm referring to in this video only includes the basics of data management and collaboration. You've likely heard of cloud-based CAD, such as 3D Creator or 3D Sculptor or XDesign or XShape, but the cloud services included with a typical purchase of SolidWorks don't include these. If you want to learn more about cloud-based CAD, we have courses on those subjects as well. All right, let's start by addressing the elephant in the room. No one is forcing you to use cloud services. Well, your company might be, but SolidWorks is not. You can use as many or as few of these tools as you would like, or you can completely ignore them by disabling the 3D Experience add-in. If you do this, you likely won't even notice a difference compared to old school SolidWorks. As a quick side note, if you happen to have the 3D Experience version of SolidWorks rather than traditional desktop, you won't be able to disable this add-in, but you can still ignore the cloud tools if you want, though I would encourage you to stick around for a while and see what they can do. To set the stage, let's say you're a designer using SolidWorks and your team is not using SolidWorks PDM. What do you do when you want to share an assembly or a drawing? More than likely, you'd use Pack and Go to zip the files up, send an email or a link and drop it into a shared network drive and then wait for a response. Then you'd have to make sure file names don't conflict, you need to remember which version was which, and you would better hope that another designer didn't make new changes to either version during this whole process, because you probably won't even know. It can get very messy very quickly, and these cloud tools can help solve that. My goal is to be able to upload files to cloud storage, lock and unlock them to prevent unwanted changes, and control revisions as design changes are made to avoid conflicting files. With the SOLIDWORKS file loaded, I'll enable the 3D Experience add-in and a new tab will appear in the task pane. This is where all the new cloud tools will become available. Taking a closer look, we'll find the assembly structure is listed along with an orange disk status symbol, indicating that these files have not been saved to the cloud yet, and that's what we're going to do next. More specifically, I'll be saving these files to a collaborative space on the platform, and collaborative spaces essentially control who has access to which files. Assuming your company has already gone through the implementation process, there's a good chance you'll have access to more than one collaborative space, and it's important that you know which one you're working in and which one you should be working in for that matter. Ask your manager or your CAD administrator. The collaborative space you're working in can be adjusted using the drop-down arrow and then the gear icon in the header of the task pane. 
Once that's taken care of, we'll save the files to the platform by right-clicking the top level assembly and choosing Save with Options. You can adjust the collaborative space from this dialog as well, if needed, and you'll also see an option to select a bookmark, which I highly recommend you click to organize and locate your project files much more effectively. You'll notice my bookmarks dropdown includes an existing entry labeled Radiator Fan, which is going to come into play later, but I don't want to add this spring assembly to it since they're not part of the same project. Instead, I'll make sure the top level bookmark is selected in the dialog, and then use the first icon in the top toolbar to create a new bookmark underneath it. I'll provide an appropriate title, make sure the collaborative space is consistent, and then confirm. I can now attach this assembly to the bookmark for a quick reference later, and I can also share bookmarks with other team members. You can think of bookmarks like folder structures in Windows Explorer. They allow you to create multiple levels of bookmarks within bookmarks and organize your work, but they're a lot more capable and intelligent than folders. Once applied, I'll complete the save operation, and all the files involved with this dynamic spring assembly are now available to anyone else that has permission via the collaborative space I save them to, so they can continue working with them. So now what? Well, let's say I've been tasked with revising the radiator fan assembly that we mentioned just a bit earlier. Instead of reaching out to the designer, or maybe there's multiple designers, asking for a pack and go and making sure nobody touches anything while I'm working, I can just go get the files I need. And I have a few pretty straightforward options to do that. The first option is to use the search icon in the 3D Experience task pane, assuming I know the name of the file I'm looking for. In this case, a search for radiator does the job, but if we had 20 different projects involving files named different variations of radiator, this might not be so helpful, especially if I need to access it every day. Once I see the file I want, I can click the drop down next to it and select open to bring it right into SOLIDWORKS, but I'm not going to do that because we have a couple other strategies that you might be more interested in. I'll close down the search results and select the compass icon at the top left of the task pane. The dialog that appears displays all the different applications that are available as part of cloud services. But for now, we're going to scroll down to the bookmark editor. Expanding the top level, I can easily see any of the files that I've bookmarked, including the radiator fan assembly, along with the spring assembly we bookmarked a moment ago. I'll click the radiator fan and expand the task pane to see file details, and a simple right click and open or drag and drop into the graphics area will load the assembly. Now that process is fairly easy, but this last method is my personal favorite. When the 3D Experience add-in is loaded, the standard open dialog gets an upgrade. When you first click the open command, it may look very familiar, but you'll notice a button at the bottom left of the dialog that says open from 3D Experience. Clicking on this will reveal all of your recent documents and those stored on the cloud are indicated with a small cloud icon on the tile for super quick access. However, there's also a shortcut to all your bookmarks, making this by far the most efficient method for opening projects from the cloud. Just don't forget to use bookmarks. And remember, if you do forget to add a bookmark when uploading files, you can always use the bookmark editor from the task pane to create one and attach files to it after the fact. Now, let's get to making a revision. First, I want to make sure someone else from the team doesn't pop in and start modifying this file at the same time I do. So I should really lock these files first to prevent anyone else from changing them. I can shift select the four non-standard assembly components and click the lock button on the collaboration tab to reserve or check these files out just for myself. Now I'll make a few simple changes starting with the fan housing diameter along with the numbers of ribs and the rib thickness as well. Once I'm done making modifications, I can save these files back to the platform once again in a couple of different ways. First, if you're not trying to advance a revision on any of the components, you can simply use the standard save disk icon and choose to save to 3D experience. However, we just made a bunch of changes as indicated by the orange disk icon in the 3D experience pane. So I want to advance the revision. To do this, I'll right click the top level assembly in the task pane and choose save with options. This option provides an additional dialog where I can view information about all the included files, such as the current revision, the maturity state, and the collaborative space they're a part of. But more importantly here, I can select to advance the revision of these files with a checkbox. Unless I wanted to continue making modifications to this assembly, it's also a good idea to unlock these files after saving so others can use them. And there's a convenient checkbox to do that automatically after saving, which I'll turn on. Lastly, it's important to understand that 3D Experience tracks revision history and can be used to recall an older revision at any time. 
Now this is a really useful and powerful capability, but it also means that the original bookmark we used to open this file is still going to be linked to the original revision. For quick access to this latest revision, I'll add it to my existing radiator fan bookmark. One quick note, not every file was changed during this revision. In particular, the fan blade wasn't modified, but I still locked it just in case. And since it didn't require a save, it also never automatically unlocked after saving. So just watch out for that. Now, when I go back to open a file, accessing this bookmark allows me to open either revision as I see fit. Reopening the A1 revision, we'll find the original geometry is restored and some additional information is offered in the task pane, including a warning informing me that several components are not the latest revision. And this is an excellent way to make sure you're always working on the latest version of your CAD files. And if you're not, you can always swap components for the latest revision, or even an older revision for that matter, from the right-click menu. Because SOLIDWORKS is communicating with the cloud throughout this process, the task pane may need to be refreshed from time to time to see the changes that you've made. Here, for example, it doesn't yet reflect the new revisions I've swapped in the rev column. I'll click the drop down arrow near the collaborative space, click refresh, and the information is updated. Now, this is just one small example of cloud services and what they can do, and it focuses primarily on revision control for files within your organization. But what if you wanted to get feedback on designs from a third party? What if they don't have SOLIDWORKS or even e-drawings? This is now possible directly within SOLIDWORKS thanks to the new share and markup capability, but we're saving that for part three of this series, improving workflows with cloud services. So be sure not to miss it. So what can cloud services do for you? Well, at a bare minimum, it can allow you to store and share files from the 3D Experience platform and provide you with improved tools to manage design revisions more effectively. But as I mentioned, this is just the very, very tip of a very, very large iceberg. And there's a ton more that you can do outside of SOLIDWORKS by using the browser-based tools included with cloud services. This includes assigning tasks, comparing revisions, managing your product's lifecycle, and much more. And especially if you're a project leader or a team leader, or if you're already using PDM to manage your CAD data, you'll probably be very interested in those. So if you wanna learn more, be sure to check out our course on 3D Experience Data Management, as well as our next video in this series, Getting Started with Browser-Based Cloud Services. This video is the next big step toward getting the most out of cloud services and covers how to set up an online dashboard, the critical apps you'll want to include and use, and how you can use them either as a designer or a manager once you're all set up. If you found this video helpful, do us a big favor and like the video so other SOLIDWORKS users can find it too. If you want to see more videos on CAD, cloud tools, simulation, and everything else design and manufacturing, consider subscribing to the channel and drop us a comment if you have a question or a subject you'd like us to cover next. Thanks for asking Solid Professor, and see you next time.